Tonight, a follow-up to a gut-wrenching story in Bristol. The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you at part by Lookout Rhode Island and Taco Comfort Solutions. Welcome aboard. Great to have you in on this VJ day. Some have off, some don't. It's always a controversy. I'm working, so that settles it. It's a work day. How about that? Uh, hope you had a great weekend. It was picture perfect, was it not? Uh, back on August 2nd, we had a, a guest on this program, uh, uh, Amanda Milkovitz from the Boston Globe. And I, I'm going to spend today's conversation without commentary from the weekend and the president uh, getting after one of his former communications directors and all sorts of challenges in Mississippi on the immigration issue. We're going to just sit here and, uh, and, and, and discuss the situation with the plaintiff in the case that Amanda Milkovich wrote about in the Boston Globe. Here was the headline from about a week and a half ago, uh, reflecting on this gentleman who is pretty popular in town and who is the old-fashioned small town, I don't want to use slang, uh, but he's a big shot there, no doubt about it. Uh, Amanda Milkovitz explained what her story was about. He has served everywhere. Um, volunteer fire, fire department, he was a police officer, he was a police explorer, state fire marshal, which is where he got in trouble. Um, trouble how? Well, that's when he got arrested. For? The only time he was arrested was in 1982 when a 14-year-old boy alleged that when he was walking home, Mr. Barboza pulled up to him in his fire marshal's car and tried to get him to get into the car. Offered, asked him to come home with him, um, asked if he wanted to get gay. The boy was terrified. That's the phrase that quotes the pit, that he did. kid didn't know what he meant. He said, get gay. Right. Yeah, so this David Barboza is uh, notorious in, in town uh, as a involved guy, a politician, uh, uh, he was a fire marshal, he was all these things, and the entire community uh, certainly knows of him and is now reflecting on what Mr. Powers has suggested he has, has done to him and now perhaps others. According to Amanda Milkovich's story, there are two other victims uh, that she speaks about. Uh, Robert Powers is my guest. Welcome. Thank you for coming in. Thanks for having me. Uh, Bob was on the radio program on Friday, and after what I thought was a, a really, really important conversation, I invited him in here tonight uh, to kind of reflect to this audience some of the things that we talked about uh, last week. The synopsis on the story is that from the age of 10 to 14, mm -hmm. you were involved with Mr. Barboza, correct? That's correct. Uh, without getting into the nitty-gritty details, give me the sketch. You, you met him how? He was a family friend. Um, he, he was a parishioner at St. Mary's Church. Um, that's how I got to know him, is through the church. And uh, he used to come by the house. One of my, my parents needed, me, needed him for, like, police stuff. And that's how Barboza... Uh, spotted me and uh, offered me rides in his police car. Hmm. You know, when I would go for a walk, um, it'd be away from the house. Uh, nobody would be around. You know, so. So this you, you had a you had you're you're alleging in a lawsuit that you filed in late last year that he molested you on a regular basis between the ages of ten and fourteen. Correct. That's correct. And that is the basis of, uh, of Amanda's original story. Since then, the media has full scale uh, gotten into this, including yep. even the Bristol Phoenix, who, who, uh, which, which apologized in their editorial for not following this story more diligently, right? Yeah, and they're, they're, they're the first ones to come forward to say, hey, we, we made a mistake, you know. What was their mistake, and what is, is, the, is the, did the community make a mistake here? I think it was the, co the coverage of it. They didn't go in depth. On, they, they only heard rumors uh, that he may be molesting little, little boys, but they didn't go in depth on uh, 
their story. Right, here's here's a typical thing, and I and I, I said this on the radio, um, and I think here previously when I was talking to Amanda about this, I have I, I have a lot of qualms about. Uh, the court of public opinion, which can finish a guy's reputation in one fell swoop. All you have to do is suggest that somebody molested uh, a youngster, and uh, if there's any kind of verifiable evidence, even without due process, it's pretty hard to get your reputation back, right? So I'm always concerned about that, but I also trust Ms. Milkovitz and her journalistic skill. Mm -hmm. uh, it seemed like she had this thing well vetted, and one of the things that is really, really important about this case, the civil case, remember this happened so many years ago, uh, you're still a young man, but you're not that young. The, <laughs> the statute of limitations has run out on the criminality That's of this correct. particular matter. Yeah. You are civilly suing him, uh, but what buoys your civil lawsuit is a state police report. Uh, about this. Tell us about how that happened. Well, I, I, I was homeless and I ran across uh, Bob Bowser on July 4th, 2014 and when he gave me a hug and that kind of sent uh, emotions and triggered a lot of flashbacks. This happened at the parade? This, this happened at the 4th of July parade in Bristol. Which wait. nobody misses in Bristol. Correct. And right. he was chief marshal of the parade. Hmm. Um, I talked with my wife figure out what we're going to do. That was the first time I told her what happened. Um, then we went to uh, Bristol Police and they referred me to the state police where they conducted an interview. Um, they asked me to be very specific on the details, which I won't get into. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and I did. They asked me to describe them. And I described him to a T, and they showed me a picture of him. I said, yeah, that's the one who molested me when I was 10 years old. So they did their investigation and found it to be very credible. Um, they also had a tip of somebody else that was at the ACI at the time. And the person at the ACI didn't know me. I didn't know him. And when they compared both stories, there was almost like a, a mirror image of each other. You know, it's it, it's not a coincidence that two people who don't know each other have almost the same exact story. So that 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 um, that report from the state police is part of the evidence in the civil case. That's correct. And you know, I think that's an interesting part of the law that we probably should examine at some point. Which uh, I think most people would think that when a, when the statute of limitations runs out criminally, that the law enforcement agencies would step out of that situation. But clearly, uh, they've they've performed an investigation here, which buoys your claim. Uh, you mentioned to me that this is something that, but for the most part, you blacked out somewhere in your teen years and just mm -hmm. put it someplace in your psyche and went on with your life, correct? Yeah, Suppre suppressed memory. It, I was able to keep it uh, suppressed for a very, very long time. Um, the individuals will come out right away and say it, but in most cases, a, per a victim will hold it in for a very long time. You're learning that now. I'm learning it now, and yeah. I'm not afraid to come out and say, you know, it took me 44 years. Yeah, we'll talk about your counseling, which I think has been pretty powerful. Uh, it affected your life, however? I mean, you say you were homeless. I know you've had a couple of health challenges. Uh, it, did it affect you occupationally? In, in the beginning, it did. Um, I turned to alcohol uh, to try to uh, subdue all the memories of what, what happened. Um, my relationships weren't that great. You and, and you did what for a living over the course of most of your working years? Warehouse work. Okay. Um, but how did you end up homeless? I got sick. Um, I had a couple of strokes. And then... No coverage? Nope. And didn't have any money to uh, pay rent the whole time. So, you know, we ended up com uh, coming homeless. You have a roof over your head now? I most certainly do. How has that happened? I'm on uh, Social Security. It took me a long time. Mm. You know, I could finally I could finally put one foot in front of the other. Okay. On, on a bunch of levels, it seems to me. Yes. Yeah, at this point. 
All right, so that's kind of a, you know, a baseline conversation here. When we come back, we'll talk about how the community has reacted, and maybe more importantly, how Bob has really kind of fought through this. Stay with us. Now the community is responding. Here's a headline that reflects it uh, from just last week and Eyewitness News coverage. A dark cloud lingers over the town, so known for their red, white, and blue celebrations. Bristol has been rocked by allegations dating back decades, recently brought to light by a Boston Globe investigation and a lawsuit. Robert Powers says he suffered sexual abuse at the hands of David Barboza multiple times. It didn't take a minute, didn't take an hour, it took a long time. Powers claims the abuse began when Barboza was a police officer in the town in the 70s. Barboza is no longer with the department. In 2014, at the 4th of July parade, Powers says he came face to face with his alleged abuser again when Barboza was the Grand Marshal. The conscious opened up finally and everything just started flashing back really quick. Powers filed a lawsuit against Barboza and is speaking publicly in hopes of helping other victims who might also live in fear. Barboza denied the allegations to the Boston Globe and is fighting the lawsuit in Superior Court. Right now, I'm putting my foot down, you know, and I came forward. Residents in Bristol held a demonstration tonight in Barboza's neighborhood. Joseph DeMello organized the gathering in hopes to show support to Powers and any other alleged victims. They are not going to hold back. They're not going to hold back anymore. Those days are over. And it's events like this that are going to open up the eyes to the community and to the people doing these crimes. It's not tolerated anymore. This is what will happen to you. Rhode Island State Police tell Eyewitness News that just last week another person came forward claiming to be a victim of Barboza's and they are currently investigating. Oh boy. Uh, there were two others in the, besides you, in the Boston Globe story, Amanda Milkovitz wrote, but uh, did not identify them. Correct. You're identified because you filed a lawsuit. That's correct. Uh, which you think is going to be uh, the, the next step in the case is maybe this fall you might have uh, at least preliminary process for the case? I'm, I'm in touch with my, my attorney quite a bit. Um, I let him handle that aspect of it. So, But, but that's what you, you were guessing, that, yeah. that you might, but it could, but he, you, you've been warned that this thing could be years. Yes, I was warned it could take a very long time, you know, j just to be hurt, hmm. you know. Unless it's settled, which is yeah. a whole nother situation. We'll talk about that in a second. The uh, the reaction from the community, you know, I'm not big on stepping up on people's property and, 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 and all of that. You know, we've had situations like that in, uh, in Providence with convicted sex offenders who have been out of jail. Uh, but it seemed like it was kind of a, a, a low-key statement by the community that, you know, we know you now. It's not like they're harassing him and you know screaming him out of his house or anything like that. No, right. Yeah, but and you've seen him on the front porch. You tell me. Yeah, I've seen him on the front, on the front porch reading his newspaper. You know, and just just casual. You know, like nothing's even happened. You know. He, he he's presumed innocent to proven guilty. Correct. You know. So. Just to sit there and pretend nothing happened, I think really gets. Under the skin of a lot of people, you know, how can you, how can you be doing that? What do you want him to do? I want him to man up. I want him to man up what he did. You know, I'm coming forward. You know, I'm not afraid to say, yeah, I was molested by him. Okay, all the victims are not coming forward. He denied it to Amanda yeah. Milkovich in the Boston Globe. And by yeah. the way, we reached out on Friday on the mm -hmm. on the radio side. Uh, and got no response from his attorney. Um, uh, they are more than welcome to join us uh, tomorrow or any night here to to respond to this. This is not this is not have to be a one sided situation. Um, but he didn't say much to Amanda. No, he didn't. He just just it's, it's not true. Yeah, I mean, that's what they all say. You know, until proven, until proven, you know, beyond a reasonable doubt that he did it. You know, but to have more than uh, just me, I feel like a spokesperson, and now other people are coming forward, other victims, asking me, what should I do? 
Well, they're doing. They're going to do the same process I went through. Now you've been quiet about this. Uh, you're, oh, you're, yeah. te you're telling me that. No names, of course. But no you're, you're telling me that others have called you to suggest the same thing happened to them. Absolutely. Are those? Are you? Is that inclusive of the two that Amanda reported on in the Globe, or, or is there? There's an additional count. Additional. How many? So far, I've had uh, four reach out to me so far. Four individuals. Yeah. Have they told you the story? They have told me on the on the phone. Do you have you met these people? No. Do you plan to? I would like to. Because. Yeah. Just to give them a hug and let them know that, you know, you're not just a victim; you're a survivor. You know, and it's okay to come forward. You know, make, kind of just break break the ice with them. You know, so they feel more comfortable talking about it, which is a big thing. If you don't talk about it, you're not gonna have the courage to come out and do it. You know, and then we had discussed before about me doing the counseling. That was a big thing for me. You know, counseling talking about it with your spouse because if you, if you hold it in it will never come out by talking about it you'll feel that relief saying okay I finally did it and now I'm going to do something about it you filed the lawsuit when you were ready when I, I, was ready. I, I put it in quotes because yeah. because you, you've said that uh, on a number of occasions you did a lot of counseling work. I did to get to the place where you could do that. And even even your wife was telling you, you do this when you're ready. You mm -hmm. discuss this with the world when you're ready. You knew when filing the lawsuit that eventually it's a public document. Yeah. You'd have to speak of well, you you would be asked to speak about it. You nobody forced you to come here. Yeah. Obviously some good work in counseling. Counseling works one, it's what I tell you, you know. I got counseling tomorrow, you know. Counseling will never stop. Um, it's, a, it's a great tool to have, and don't be afraid to use it. You know, yeah, when, when I was ready, you know, I went with my wife and the counselor, you know, when you're ready, you will know. And I was ready, and I knew that Yes, the media would ask me, you know, once I knew who I was, you know, ask me a lot of questions. That was part of the council on how you can handle that, mm -hmm. how you can handle the media. Very simple. Do what I'm doing right now. Don't be afraid. Well, I, the work you've done is, is fantastic. I mean, it, it's just, it's fantastic. And you've had stages of things that you've had to address. You talked to me on Friday about it having to talk with your mom and dad who are retired in Florida over this. Correct. Let me rephrase. There's a true Rhode Islander saying I'm talking. Your mother and father are in, Rhode I are in Florida. You had to talk to them about this and you had to get over the idea that they didn't know. In fact, they learned about it when it was reported, correct? My mother was the first to learn about it and that was the day after the, when the Globe came out. Hmm. And I, I didn't tell any of my family but I did know at some point I was going to have to. Well, once it became a story. Yeah. And but you kind of let it play out the way it played out. Mm -hmm. And everything kind of has come to you in your comfort zone. Yeah. That you've worked hard to establish for yourself, correct? Yeah. Well, oh, yeah. I mean, I, I, w I wasn't forced on nothing, you know. <clears throat> but the other part was I didn't tell my dad either. You know. I, you were worried about what they were going to say. Yes. It was easy to talk to the state police and talk to you, but it was very difficult to talk with my own parents. And? And they support it. They, they know why I did it, why I didn't say nothing. You know, so now, now they're, they're behind me 100%. Big relief? <laughs> Big relief. You know. Did you doubt? I had doubts about what, how their reaction was going to be. What did you worry about? I was more worried that they were going to say that, we're, that we failed somehow or another. Um, worried about how it would be for them. For them. That they missed it. Mm-hmm. 
Did you tell them it wasn't their fault? No, they told me it's, it was not my fault. They told you it was not your fault. Right. It was, it did was, you have to tell them that it wasn't their fault either? Yeah, I did. So it's been a good exchange. Yeah. And, and, and it's all started with one thing, talking about it and counseling. We'll be right back to talk about uh, where we go next. Stay with us. Town administrator. Deputy Chief in Bristol. Yes. And he said that everybody in the community knows. And he was referring to the 1982 case, but that's what stopped me. I thought, wait, I'm a small town. I'm from a small town. Um, so, you know, people do know things. But that's what really, it's a story about a man, it's a story about a crime, but it's a story about a small town. Yeah, we only have a couple minutes, uh, Bob. But you've you've done a, you've done such great personal work, and you're already offering consultative advice to people who have been victimized, uh, like you say you have. Uh, this town's going through a learning lesson. It is. The, it, what, what what do you think? And listen, I, you know, I, there's a fine line between that goes on in town and, yep. and, and the chippy behavior that can occur and the clicky stuff that goes on in small town America. And something as important and devastating as this. I only have a minute. Yep. What's the message, the community that you have for it's them? A, it went from d -d 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 to reality. Reality finally. Well, when I say that it's it usually yeah. mean-spirited, non—you know, yeah. you know, unsubstantiated, blah blah blah. You know, the way yeah. people can be with each other. There was enough. You say there was enough understanding in town about what you think Mr. Barboza had done that somebody should have stepped up. Is, yeah. that, is that what you're telling me? Exactly. Uh, the community itself. Once the story broke, they all came as one unit. It didn't matter if you were a Republican, a Democrat, or independent. You can walk through a town at peace right now. Is that is that how you feel? Yes. And people are still coming up to me, even while walking, congratulating me. All right. Third, I have 15 seconds here. What do you want from the lawsuit? What do you want? What I want from the lawsuit? Money or justice or Ju both? Both. Just Justice. Money. Justice is more important to you. Yeah. Yeah, justice is more important right now, you know, for what he did. What he's alleged to have done. We'll, uh, yeah. we'll leave the seat open and we'll keep the relationship going. Um, sorry for what you've gone through, but congratulations on the good work you've yeah. done. Thank you very much. All right, kiddo. Uh, final word when we come back. And again, there's a seat open here for Mr. Barboza or anybody who wants to tell, for lack of a better term, that side of the story. We'll be following up a lot this week on the Providence school situation now that the edict has come down from the state. Uh, I don't think it's as clear a picture as people would suggest it is, and we'll, uh, we'll figure it out, well, at least as much as we can, over the course of uh, the days coming. Enjoying the summer still before day one of school. We'll talk to you on the radio at 3 tomorrow on WPRO, and thanks for tuning in. See you tomorrow night, too. Bye.